Now, for the gills and the and the body, I'm going to be using a, a organza rib. This one here and this this one here is a you can see it says gold, which is a quite a nice colour. You can see better there in the depth of colour. It's a it's an off yellow, but it catches the light really well when you're working with a, a pattern that's a subsurface or so, or a, a pupa that's getting it's trying to get near the surface and, and usually in the fast water it will gather some fine bubbles and the organza rib makes a great material for that. Now you can see I've cut a length and basically what I'm going to do is for cause I'm tying quite a few of these and I don't need it too long but the best is cut away the one edge just work it way up. Well I'm using a long pair of scissors to do that Keep that, don't throw that away because that makes for great for many nymph patterns as well. But what I'm going to do here is to remove the running fibre along the ribbon. It's quite easy, use your nail, just bring it out, tear it away and this will give you your organza hackle if you want to call it. Just work your way down. Now, when you get to the close to the, the tie at the side, what I like to do is get my, my dubbing needle. Take it, take all these running fibres away, and then making then. There's my hackle prepared. As you can see, I, I like to hold it in the vice. It's much easier to do that. And then when we want to sort of tie it or prepare it, we can then cut along or reduce the length of the fibre. Use your fine pair of scissors, long pair of scissors, depending on what you're tying. In this case, uh, I'm just doing the caddis pupa, but I want it. I want two or three long fibres. So I'll come up at a slight angle to about maybe an inch or so. Depending on the size of the fly that you're tying, obviously it should be shorter if it's a smaller fly or so, but you just want to give the impression to the gills. And basically that is it ready to tie in uh, so you can tie a fly. But at the very beginning where you're catching it in, you should really take it down to the, the actual tie at the side. So that's about there. Now I'm going to be showing you basically a very simple caddis pupa. Now uh, this is a, a subsurface version. This is a fly that you want to sort of basically hold within the first foot uh, of the either the loch or the river that you're fishing the stream. Uh, this is where the fish are feeding and concentrating on the caddis pupa as they, as they emerge. So basically this is a subsurface fly. Now I'm going to use materials to help keep it in that area. Now the hook I'm using is a Sissa size 12, it's a check nymph hook that I'm using. Uh, the size this flies for the locks, uh, you can mess about the sizes for the rivers and so on, but the same pattern will work in the rivers, I use smaller versions. Now it's quite a simple fly to tie. The thread I'm going to be using is a light Cahill, uh, AO thread, the uni thread. Now when you start the thread in line with the point of the hook, Two or three turns to catch it in and then remove the waste piece. Now we, we prepared my organza rib. Now this is, see, this is the gold organza rib. I've trimmed it so basically I can tie it in and then I've got a nice fibre, short fibre there and then it tapered up for the a turn or so at the, at the, the beginning of the thorax. Best to tie this in the way down. So we just catch it on the side. Work my way down, tying it in. Makes it easier to do that. Now for the body I'm going to be using, this is just a local foam. It's gold and yellow. The gold, don't bother, I don't really care about the gold being anywhere, but the, the foam's ideal. Uh, there's lots of other foam you could use. The HD foam from Wopsy, as I say, this is a local foam. Um, just cut it into a small lens, using a long pair of scissors. Around about 3 or so mil wide. And then what I'm going to do is just cut it into a, a slight taper, scratch it on the side, scratch it on and then wind back up. You've got to protect the foam so the way you do that is to wind it over some super glue. So I've just got my super glue, touch it just on the shank, just around that point there and then we wind up, just take it as it comes, 
Got the gold on this side and the yellow. Want a nice caddis type body. Even if you come into the thorax or too far up, you can always come back. Just so that you end up with a nice shape. That's a good caddis type body shape. Trim that away. Now what I'm going to do is tidy this area here. Can bring the aganza rib up. Just rub it through, just following it. Looking round about three to four turns, and then we come into our turn here where we've got the longer fibre. That's plenty, that's enough. I tidy this up. So see, these are not hard flies to tie. Trim that away. Okay, and tidy the thorax. You want it to taper towards the eye of the hook. You see how you get a nice sort of hackle, as you call it, of the organza. And the organza ribble is just works really well in the water. It catches the light, just like fine bubbles. Now for the hackle, I'm going to use a cock hackle. This is like a barred ginger, if you want to call it. Uh, it's a cheap, cheap Indian cock neck. I want quite a long fibre. I want it to go well back, well marked. I've been using them all up here, so I'll have to look. There we are. I say don't be shy with the length of the fibre because you are representing the pupa hatching so you want the good side of the front of the hackle facing yourself and wind up now you could put an impression of a wing on this but I found you don't need it so I'm using a this is a dubbing uh, an SLS without dubbing this is a like a fiery brown just use the materials that you have, the colour combinations that suit the caddis that comes off in your water. But just lightly dub this on, lightly dub it on, not tight, because I want to velcro, velcro the fibres up into the hackle. So just form a nice sort of shape. Just twisting every so often just to keep it on the thread. Draw back what you don't need, leave yourself enough room. For tying in the hackle and I'm going to put in some horns in this. So you see how loose these fibres are, don't worry about that, that's what I want. And then we just get our hackle with the front of the hackle towards the, the eye. Run it up through. As I say, it's a simple dressing, don't want too fussy with this fly. So there's four turns there, just up through. Two or three turns to get it caught. Remove your hackle pliers. I always like to fold back the hackle. And then I'm going to put a wee half hitch here, just at this point, just to stop the thread bouncing off while I'm working on it. And trim away. Meaning, like, when you're... I'm going to be using the Velcro at this point, just to rough the fly up even more. This is bringing out the dubbing. Into the fly. You see the length of the why I wanted the the long fibre so you get really a nice uh, emerger, bursting out type fly. Now what I'm going to do is get a curved pair of scissors or a tight pair of scissors, just trim away the top part of the fly, or the hackle, to encourage the shape. You can bring up these. Now you, you can slow this up even more by putting some floating into the actual the hackle fibres, slow it. And then, to say for the horns, I'm going to use some bronze mallard, two, two fibres. Just bring them 90 degrees from the stem of the hackle, which will line the tips up. Now, separate these fibres. Obviously, you want to be able to see them, so have them round about twice the length of the body, just slightly, not any more than that. I just tie them on the top, two or three turns to catch it on. You see how they're sitting? Fold back these ends, the waist ends, tuck them back. Then we can finish. Nice and tight. To say it's a simple dressing, you don't want to be too complicate it. Uh, then we can, we can really break this off because it's strong enough to break off. And then there we are. Rough. You want it rough, don't want it too sort of neat. When you're able to gink it up, uh, get a lovely shape in the water, and then all you have to do 
We've got varnish into the head. And then here we are, that's your subsurface caddis pupa. 